Okay, in part one of this video, we uh, started looking at this uh, RC circuit and uh, tried to determine whether or not the circuit was linear. And we discovered that uh, the circuit satisfies homogeneity if the initial capacitor voltage is zero. If the initial capacitor voltage is not zero, the circuit does not satisfy homogeneity. So now uh, we'll look at this in terms of whether or not it satisfies additivity. And um, to do that, we'll actually uh, well, we'll get rid of all these homogeneity things. And again, we'll decide whether or not it satisfies additivity by using just an example. Um, so suppose that, uh, well, and again, to determine if it satisfies additivity, I have to have an x1 of t that I put through the system and see what its output is. So let's have x1 of t be a unit step function. Um, that goes up to a value of 1. Let's have x2 of t be a unit step function that we've delayed and goes up to a value of 1. So this is x2 of t. And so we're going to have to put the sum of these guys through. And that's going, the sum of these two is going to look like this. So this is x1 plus x2. Okay, so now let's do our thought experiment again and see what the outputs of the system will be. And again, I'm hoping that you're familiar enough with RC circuits to just look at this and say what it ought to be. If you're not, trust me, um, I wouldn't lie to you about this. So the output due to x1 is just going to be an exponential that increases and asymptotically approaches 1. So this is y1. Again, assuming that I have an initial condition of 0. Okay. y2 is going to be something that looks like this where it basically starts at 0 and then exponentially increases towards 1. But since the voltage doesn't go up until uh, this time here, the voltage on the output doesn't start to go up until this time here. And then if you look at what would happen with the sum, x1 plus x2, uh, when you first take the step up to 1 volt, uh, the uh, capacitor voltage starts to increase. Uh, when you increase the voltage to 2 volts, it starts to increase faster and eventually goes towards a steady state value of 2. Now, my art is bad enough here that you may or may not actually believe that this is the case, but I claim uh, that uh, this signal plus this signal is equal to this signal. Okay, so this this uh, y1 plus y2 is equal to the output that you get when you run x1 plus x2 through. So under the assumption that y0 is equal to 0, um, this system, again if you believe that I've got the input or the outputs correct for a given input, seems to satisfy additivity and it turns out that in fact it does. But now let's look at the case when y0 is equal to 2, okay? If I put in x1, then it starts up at 2 and goes down towards 1. Okay, so this would be y1 of t in response to x1 of t. If I put in 
x2, which is a delayed version, the capacitor starts at 2 and actually d starts to discharge <coughs> excuse me, until the uh, step function occurs and then it charges back up to a final value of 1. And so if I take y1 and y2, well, and uh, let's, I guess I need to run x1 plus x2 through it. So it starts at a steady state, or it starts at an initial value of 2, starts to drop towards 1, and then goes back up towards 2. So this is, this guy is the output to x1 plus x2. And so now the question is, if I take y1 and add it to y2, do I get this? Do I get this uh, output of x1 plus x2? And the answer is no. Uh, one way to see that is at 0, uh, y1 is 2 and y2 is 2. So at 0, y1 plus y2 is 4, but here it's still equal to 2. So in this case, this uh, when the initial condition, the initial voltage on the capacitor is 2, this system does not satisfy additivity. Uh, again, when the initial condition is 0, the system does satisfy additivity. So what we've discovered is that uh, the circuit is linear. Oh, well here, we'll say it's nonlinear when y of 0 is equal to 2, and it turns out for any non-zero initial condition you have the same thing happening. And it's linear when y of 0 is equal to 0. So in this case, the initial conditions, uh, if they are 0, it's linear. If they're non-zero, it's nonlinear. So now we'd like to look at time invariance. And in fact, it turns out that because I selected my x1 and x2 so well, we already have the information we need to determine if it's time invariant, or at least to conceptually determine if it's time invariant. Uh, I'll get rid of the part that we don't need to worry about anymore. Okay, so you'll notice that x1, x1 here, well, I'm sorry, x2 is a delayed version of x1. And uh, if a system is time invariant, then I can take a signal, run it through the system, and get the output. I can delay the signal, here I'm delaying it by this amount, run it through the system, and get the same output delayed by the same amount. And so you can see then, when this initial condition is equal to zero, that y2 is just a delayed version of y1. And so when um, y0 is equal to 0, not only is the system linear, but it's also time invariant. If I now look at um, <coughs> the second case where y2 is equal to 2, you can see I have x1 going in. I get this funny shape coming out. I have x2, which is a delayed version of x1 going in, and I get this version, this funny shape coming out. And it's obvious, hopefully, that this waveform is not a delayed version of this waveform. Okay? So again, when y0 is equal to 2, it is not time invariant. Okay? <coughs> so what this tells us is that whether or not a system in this case, a system that's described by a first-order constant coefficient linear differential equation, and at some point we'll actually explain what that all means. Um, <coughs> this um, system's linearity and time invariance depends on whether or not the initial value of y of t is uh, zero. This y of t, by the way, is a state variable, okay, because in order to understand the behavior of the circuit, or to predict it going forward, I need to know what the value of the voltage across the capacitor is. And if I have different values of voltage, that will change uh, what happens 
um, in terms of the circuit's future behavior. So um, in this case, we can see that in order for the circuit to be linear, the initial value for the state variable, which is the capacitor voltage, has to be zero. Okay. Later on, uh, we will uh, talk about uh, Laplace transforms in a way that allows you to um, use the nice linearity and time invariance properties of the circuit, or the more generally a system, uh, this this guy, um, when uh, the system is linear, but also allows you to take into account non-zero initial conditions, which makes your life really, really just wonderful. So that's the end of this example.